These are four circles. No matter how far down you go, the fractal pattern never ends. Every single circle is tangent to two other circles, and at the same time is tangent to the number line below. The most amazing thing about this is that each circle always touches the line at one and only one rational point. There is no circle that touches the line at any irrational point. This means that this set of circles gives us a geometric representation of the set of rational numbers. In this video, I will show you exactly how this beautiful image arises from the simple act of slightly changing the rules of fraction addition. I'll also show you how to build a related sequence of circles that all remain tangent at rational points, yet converges to the most irrational number of all. We begin with the numbers 0 and 1. Ultimately, we want to write all rationals that exist in this interval. But a more humble initial goal is to form something called fairy sequences. A fairy sequence involves picking a number n and writing down all the fractions in this interval that have a denominator at most n. So for n equals 1, we only have these two. For n equals 2, we also have 1 half. For n equals 3, we add two more numbers, 1 third and 2 thirds. n equals 4, again, adds two more numbers to the list. Subsequent values of n continue to add more and more fractions. Okay, so this seems like a rather tedious way to enumerate all the fractions, right? Why would we want to do this? Well, if you take a close look at each of the sequences, a surprising pattern emerges. To see it, let's pick a number at random, along with the two numbers adjacent to it. Interestingly, the middle number is the result of applying something called fairy addition to the two numbers adjacent to it. That is, rather than first finding a common denominator and then adding the numerators together, as is done with normal addition. Here, we simply add the numerators together and add the denominators. The result is the number in the middle. This funny way of addition goes by a few different names. Fairy addition, the median, and also the freshman sum, in honor of all those who have made this common mistake when first learning about fractions. Amazingly, this result occurs with every single number in any of these sequences. Pick any number along with its two neighbors. The middle one will always be the median of the other two. If it isn't at first sight, you simply need to reduce the fraction to its lowest terms. So for any fairy sequence, no matter how long, any three neighboring points will satisfy this condition. An even more succinct way to capture this relationship is to use the fact that any two neighboring points will also satisfy this formula. So these two conditions are equivalent. Keep this result in mind, as it will reveal just how fairy sequences are related to Ford circles. Next, we will go back to a visual representation of the unit interval. In order to construct the Ford circles, we will need to follow a simple recipe. For the first two circles, we will draw them so that one is tangent to the unit interval at the point 0, while the other is tangent at the point 1. They will also each have a diameter of 1. The next step is to draw a circle that is tangent to both of these and is also tangent to the interval. This results in a circle that touches the unit interval at the point one half. If we then repeat this process, at the next step, we get two circles with a diameter of one ninth located at one third and two thirds. And infinitely iterating this process results in a countable number of circles that never intersect each other. All are tangent to two other circles and touch the unit interval at a rational point p e over q. Each circle also has a diameter that is related to the denominator of this rational, and it's given by 1 over q squared. So each of these circles has a rational number p over q that we can associate to it. And since there are a countably infinite number of them, it should come as no surprise that all of the rationals are covered in this process. But how does this relate to the fairy sequences? Where are we applying fairy addition here? In order to see this, we will apply a geometric argument. Let's focus on two circles that are tangent to one another. It does not have to be these two specific circles, it can be any two. The argument will apply generally. So that means we can just call the rationals associated to these circles p1 over q1 and p2 over q2. Next, we will draw a line that connects the center of each of these circles. Since the two circles are tangent to one another, this line must be perpendicular to the tangent line. Consequently, its length must simply be the sum of the two radii of each of the circles. 
and it also is the hypotenuse of the following right triangle. We can also represent the distance of each part of the triangle as follows. Now we can use good old Pythagoras' theorem to relate all three terms. And finally, by doing some slight rearranging, reducing, and solving for P1Q2 minus P2Q1, we arrive at the following result. The absolute value of the difference between these two terms must equal 1, which is the exact same requirement we had for two numbers that were adjacent to each other in a fairy sequence. This means that every pair of circles that are tangent to each other in the Ford circle fractal represents two fractions that are adjacent to each other in a fairy sequence. So just like we could pick any number in a fairy sequence and see that it was the median of its two neighbors, we can also do the same for all of these circles. No matter which three neighbors you pick, the same exact relationship will hold. The rational associated to every circle will always be the median of the rational associated to the adjacent tangent circles. So in a sense, the four circles arise from fairy sequences, and at the same time provide a geometric representation of the rationals contained in them. Okay, so now that we see how four circles are directly related to fairy sequences, let's now consider a similar, though slightly different setup. We first draw two circles of diameter one at the points zero and one. Then draw a third circle at the point one half, just as before. But now, instead of continuing with the forward circle process the whole way down, we will instead only move right and draw the circle that is tangent to these two. Then we will move left and draw the circle tangent to these two. We continue with this process, always alternating between left and right. As you can imagine, each circle will get smaller and smaller. So eventually, you will converge on some point, right? What point is it? We'll end this video by calculating what p is. The way we'll do this is to calculate the rational number associated to each circle, which is equivalent to the distance the point is from zero. So we already know the first three are zero, one, and one half. We could calculate the next one geometrically, but we've already shown that all of these circles will correspond to rational numbers in a fairy sequence. So instead, we can take a shortcut and just find the number the circle is associated with. It's in between one half and one, so it must be two thirds. We do the same for the next circle. The fairy sequence for n equals four would correspond to adding a circle to the right, but here we are adding to the left, so we go to n equals five. Now this circle is to the left of two thirds and to the right of one half, so it must be three fifths. Next, we are looking for a circle that is to the right of three fifths and to the left of two thirds. For the next fairy sequences, a number between 3 fifths and 2 thirds does not appear until n equals 8. At n equals 8, we find that the rational must be 5 eighths. We can then keep repeating this process, again always alternating between the left and right of the previous circle, and checking each subsequent fairy sequence until the correct number finally appears. And as we do this, a notable pattern appears. The sequence we end up getting on the numerator is the Fibonacci sequence, and we get the same sequence on the denominator, except shifted by one spot to the left. So in terms of the nth term in the Fibonacci sequence, our sequence is given by f sub n minus 1 over f sub n, and it is a well-known result that as n goes to infinity, this sequence converges to the number square root of 5 minus 1 over 2, the famous golden ratio. Isn't that neat? A seemingly simple game of playing around with this funny fairy addition and creating fairy sequences results in an incredibly rich mathematical structure. Not only do the four circles that arise from this provide a beautiful visualization of how the rationals are spread throughout the entire unit interval, but also by selecting a basic alternating pattern of traversing through these circles, we find a sequence converging to the golden ratio. You could of course try other sequences, like beginning on the left instead of the right, and then alternating between left and right, or doing different permutations of right, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, and so on, to find what other numbers you can converge to. In fact, the use of fairy sequences in this way turns out to be extremely useful in finding rational approximations for any irrational number.